it's Graham here at Questron, and today I'm going to take you through provisioning. What does that mean? Well, let's say we have a load of new Crestron devices, such as this Mercury Mini MM30TA. How do we get this signed in? Well, the first option is you can walk around, walk up the keypad and type in the details. Obviously, if you have a lot of these devices to do, so let's say maybe a hundred, that's a lot of work. So how do we do it in a better way? Let's say someone walks along, plugs it in, gets it on the network, then we want to remotely provision this. Well, one thing that's just been released in Teams Admin Center is the ability to uh, upload the MAC address and serial number that you'll find on the box, you'll find on the bottom of the device as well, or you'll find it on your delivery note or shipping details, or they can be requested. So you need to know the MAC address uh, of this device. We can then remotely provision it once it's on the network. How do we do that? Well, quite simply, we head into the Teams Admin Center and we are logging in. So again, you need obviously administration rights to come in and do this. We jump to the uh, IP phone section. So this is relatively new, it was in the latest release, so you must be on the most current build. And I come up to the actions in the top corner and I choose provision new device. Again, I can upload multiple MAC addresses here. So again, if I've got a CSV file, there's a little template there, uh, location and CSV, or I can simply add it manually. I have the MAC address here and I just simply need to type it in. Now just be cautious on these devices and uh, on the Crestron UCP8 and devices, there is also a Wi-Fi address. We want the first one, the Mac one. Uh, Mac two is the uh, Wi-Fi address. So we want to put it on the, the Mac one. Well, that's the one we're going to talk to. Um, so you don't need to put the dashes in. Automatically does that for you in Teams Admin Center. A location, you know, that could be office, home office, you know, floor two, you know, whatever you may want it to be. So I'll just put in, um, home office for now and I hit apply so now we've got that there that is now ready waiting to be provisioned I can click on this guy here and I can choose to generate a verification code so what does that mean well I now have the six digit code that someone needs to enter onto the, the device so it can be enrolled into this Teams Admin Center. So this is my test tenant, so that allows it to be en enrolled in here. So now let's just give this guy some power and we can then get it online and we'll show you what it looks like. So once I power on my device, I've now powered on my Mercury Mini and you can see it's now got a new code on there. So this is the new welcome screen uh, once you have powered on this device. Now remember, this is on the latest firmware, so the latest build of the Microsoft Teams uh, phone build. The other use case for this provision new device, this device must never be signed in before, otherwise this will not work. Uh, so if you've signed it in, tested it, and then shipped it out to a remote location, and then hoping to sign it in, that will not work. You will have to factory reset the device. So for example, on the uh, Mercury Mini, you unpower it, and then you, as soon as the lights come on and go green, you tap the home button, that little line there, 10 times, and then it'll ask you to factory reset. So before you send it out remotely, and you want to do a remote uh, provision, you must factory reset. What I'll do now uh, to help us show this demo is that I'll bring up live that Mercury Mini screen. So you can see it here. So just right here now is that Mercury Mini. What I could do to log this in is that I could then go to microsoft.com forward slash device login and enter that code. And then sign into the browser as, you know, meeting room four, whatever it might be called. That obviously requires me viewing that screen. And obviously I've got some debugging tools. I can see what's on that screen. Most of the time, you may have an engineer on site, and maybe they'll send you a Teams message saying, right, meeting room four is this code. So you could sign it in that way. That's one way of doing it. What I can do um, is I can then press the cog key in the top right-hand corner, and I can select provision new phone. Uh, I go to phone provision, and now I've got this code. So again, this is a code, and this code lasts for 24 hours. Zero, seven, eight, six. Five, three. And I hit next. Now this device will contact the server and try and sign in. There we go. Device is now provisioned successfully. So it's now signed in. So you can see my test tenant, Crestron XYZ. And if I now jump over to the next tab, waiting for sign in. And then what we can see, this will now refresh. It can see that this device is signed out. So I can now click on this device. I can click on signed out. 
So now I know the code. Uh, it's going to retrieve that code that you see on that display there. So that D9SZ or Z, depending where you are, that will then appear in the Teams Admin Center. So it's reading the, the device so I can do this. Now I'm obviously fortunate enough I can see this uh, device remotely. Again, you won't have that luxury. Uh, so all you would have to do to provide uh, an engineer on site is that six digit code they tap it in and then you've got control so it needs a little bit of uh you know let's say hand holding once it's plugged in powered on it now shows you on the uh, device the administrator is signing into the system so it knows it's been remotely provisioned and as you can see now i have got this available to me here so it's given me this new code because again this code is random it changes this uh, alpha character code so all i need to do uh, is go to this site uh, copy this code as well so I'll click the copy button and I'll go in here. And it's asking me for my code. So I paste that in there. And next it will ask me what account do I want to sign it in on. So that's correct. I want to sign it in with, with this meeting room account, for example. I select that. It'll ask me for the password for that account. And now it's signed in. And then we can then see back on the device. Close that window. Let's just jump to the device. You can see it's now signing in, registering with Intune and any policies that may be there. Just obviously make sure when you registered the devices, you're allowed to enroll uh, this Android device. You can see you get a little pop-up saying, um, you know, what data do you want? Um, this is obviously what the company portal can do. And of course, we want to activate uh, this device now. Again, this is the first time I'm doing this. So again, the engineer on site who gave you that code, just have to tap uh, activate this device on there. Again, depending on your engine policies, may de depend what is shown up on the panel there. It might just sign in straight away. So now once that is set up, um, it's ready to go. It's ready to you know, start making calls. Uh, receiving calls, people can book it out if it's got the calendar, etc. So if you have a resource mailbox with a common area phone license, for example, you'll get your calendar and people can obviously walk it up to the device. For example, here, this Mercury Mini also has USB tether, so you can plug it in and do a BYOD call. So if it's a non-Teams call you have to do in that session, you can, of course, do that with the Mercury Mini. So again, imagine doing 100 of these. It makes it really simple now using uh, Teams Admin Center. You could actually go one step further with, say, Crash on XIO Cloud, and you do get that remote view. The, the live screen of that uh, Mercury Mini, we can do that with XIO Cloud. So that's an additional subscription to help you monitor, manage, and provision the hardware too. Uh, it doesn't go this advanced in terms of signing in. That's what the Teams Admin Center for. It's great for doing that element. Uh, but being able to see the remote touch panel, that's one of the beautiful things of XIO Cloud. So that helps you manage all your uh, crash from devices. So it's now signing in, as you can see. So again, it's quite weird. It's all doing it automatically for you. So again, very easy to do centrally, uh, especially when you've got many of these devices to do. So there we have it. It is now signed in. We can now do a few other things uh, in Teams Admin Center, for example. Well, I'm in the UK and we can see that that is five hours difference. So we go to our phones, the configuration profiles. Um, I can add, for example, I've got a default profile here. So what do I want in terms of my uh, time zone? Do I want to put the device lock on? Because it's uh, a common area phone. So again, I could call this, um, you know, common area phone profile, for example. I don't want these devices locking because they're in public spaces. Uh, screensaver, do you want that to come on or not? Again, that's entirely up to you. How often do you want the brightness, etc. Of normal oper operating office hours. And obviously key thing here is obviously my time zone. And I do like the 24 hour clock. Uh, a few networking settings if you want there. Uh, so I can now go ahead and click save once I'm happy with that. So that's now got that policy there. I now want to assign this policy to a device. Go to our device and I can then assign a configuration and I can look for that new profile, common area phone profile and hit apply. So now this is gonna push this config down to the device, obviously then change things like the clock. So for example, what I'm showing, 54 uh, that will then change to uh, 0954 example when it gets that profile so what do I see here on the phone so I've got my calls I can see my uh, call list etc that's on there uh, I've got access to my calendar so I can see if any new meetings are there I also have access to do a uh, meet now for example add an event as well so these are all standard features I can go to more I can look up the people 
and obviously search people in the directory. So I've got the top right there, I've got to meet now, so I can do that, join an audio call and get that, get that going. That's not an issue. It's all standard Microsoft Teams, the features. What else? I have, obviously, key is the calendar. So if I do book this room, I've got that single click to join. When I've got my meeting booked, I walk up there and I hit that join button. So why don't we create a little meeting and share that what it looks like. And we'll make that a Teams meeting. And obviously, we want to invite the Flex room number five. And I simply hit send. And then you will see that appear on here. Again, for this room account, I've told it to process uh, meetings automatically. Don't allow conflicts. The usual resource mailbox configuration that you would do on a device like this. There we go. It's got it already. So I can see it there. So when I come in the room, I can see that I've got a meeting. It's due in four minutes. If I go to the calendar, obviously, I can see what's been booked for the day, etc. That shows up. Uh, but for me to walk in the room, I simply hit join and I join that meeting. So really simple for users to uh, do that. Again, some of the features here on the uh, MM30 is that we can obviously see the roster list, see who's there. We can invite people. Uh, we can then also uh, raise our hand, for example, so uh, and add reactions, etc. Uh, you know, these are the nice features you have on the Teams client. So when you're in that meeting space, you're not left out. So, you know, we love these features that are on Microsoft Teams. And again, live captions, they can be turned on. So, um, you know, if people are talking and that is coming through, that is one option to be seen. So when I start talking on the device, uh, it actually shows me on the Mercury mini screen, the live captions, which is, I think this is fantastic. It's really cool uh, to have this on here. So once you press that uh, profile down to the device, you'll notice on the uh, touch screen there, uh, you'll have to restart this device. So you can see that the time has already changed, so it's already picked that change up, but it just requires a little restart. So you, you're, all you're doing is restarting the app, you're not re restarting the device, so it's just, you know, like you do on your, on your mobile or cell phone, you close the app, restart it. So there you go, it's got the new time, it's got my pre uh, preferentials now, etc. that I've pushed down from that policy. So again, doing that remote provisioning really helps you deploy these devices really easily from anywhere in the world. So yeah, there we have the Mercury Mini. Very, very simple to use. Great features on there, really inclusive with the rest of Microsoft Teams ecosystem. So again, any information, just let me know below and I can uh, answer those questions for you. Have a great day. Thanks.